Uh, welcome everyone. First, a big hello uh, and welcome to our nursing Hawk Talk for admitted students. My name is Joe Fantosi. I'm the Director of Recruitment and First Year Scholarships here at Hunter and it's my pleasure to host you here today. Um, if this is your first time that you're joining us for an admitted student event, uh, we want to give you a huge welcome and congratulations. This was a very competitive year for Hunter admissions, so you should certainly be proud of your admission to Hunter this year. Um, today's sessions obviously focused on nursing. Uh, while we're sad we can't meet you in person just yet, these next 45 minutes are going to be a great opportunity for you to learn about the nursing program and meet some really key people as well, as well as some students, which is really important. Uh, before we jump in, I just wanna remind you that we are in webinar mode. Um, so while we can't see you on camera, um, please ask all of your questions in the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we'll get back to you in the Q&A tab, um, or we'll ask your question live at the very end. Um, so we'll do our best to make sure that we have a pretty big group today, but we'll do our best to make sure that we get to all of your questions. Um, so without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce Maria, Maria Mendoza, one of the pre-nursing advisors, um, and Maria is going to take you through the first part of this presentation. Thank you so much, Joe. So welcome everyone and congratulations on your acceptance to Hunter College. Um, I'm really excited that you're starting uh, your nursing career kind of in a public health crisis, right? Um, you get to really think about uh, what nursing is. Um, and as probably many of you, you probably have seen that nursing, the profession of nursing has been in the news probably all year. Um, so you have kind of an idea of what to expect. Um, I kind of want to take a moment and share uh, on my screen our nursing website um, and really talk about the program. So this is really our website uh, that you can visit at any time. It's hunter.cuny.edu forward slash nursing. Uh, and I'm just going to go through the perspective students tab. Uh, and I know that uh, many of you visiting us today will be freshmen this fall 2021. Uh, so that program would be the Bachelor of Science in Nursing program, what we call uh, our generic nursing program. As you can see on the right hand side in our website, we do offer information sessions. Uh, so if after today you're interested uh, in knowing more about the program, our next one for the generic program will be on March 19th. Um, our physical location is really on 25th Street. As you can imagine, we have been remote uh, except for our skills lab courses. Uh, those are where you learn how to get blood pressure, how to hear the heart. Those classes uh, have been ongoing uh, since the pandemic, just teaching students and of course uh, with CDC guidelines. So you, we have our students really safe in the classroom, still learning uh, about uh, nursing. The program is really consisting of two parts. Uh, it's the liberal arts, uh, the general education requirement, which we call Hunter Core requirement, and prerequisite courses. And then there's the professional nursing part of the program. Uh, what students uh, as freshmen do, and I'll scroll down, is that the first part of the first year, you're going to be taking a lot of the prerequisite, all of the prerequisites for the nursing program. So we like our students to start with the general chemistry with a lab course, organic chemistry with a lab course than they would do in the spring semester, uh, statistics, um, English, general psychology, human development, um, and a US history course, which you can look at the catalog and see which course you want to fulfill that requirement. Uh, we also have a second application process. So as Hunter College students taking courses, our students then take, uh, excuse me, file an application with nursing casts. Um, that application opens on November 30th and then you, you submit it by February 1st. And then by June, you'll know if you're admitted or not. As you can see on your screen, we do have our students do need to have a minimum of a 3.2 GPA to be considered. We take a look at that fall semester in addition to any college now, any other courses that you have taken uh, to really review that GPA. Uh, we also require what we call the nursing, uh, the NLN National League of Nursing pre-admission exam. Uh, we do have a dedicated page for our NCLEX exam. And as you can imagine, due to the pandemic, that exam also went virtual through Eximity. 
Um, and so students have been taking the exam proctored uh, by the NLN, uh, and we are going to be reviewing, of course, uh, those uh, scores. The test itself has a verbal math and science component. It's 160 questions, 60 verbal, 40 math, and uh, 60 science, and you're allotted 40 minutes for each part. Uh, we are looking for the highest composite score for that test. Uh, so 50% of the decision, of course, is on the NLN. 50% is on your overall GPA. Uh, we accept 100 students uh, in the program for our generic program each fall. We only accept admission in the fall for all of our undergraduate nursing programs. Uh, so you have to make sure that you're taking the prerequisite courses in sequence if you're interested in becoming a nurse. Um, and then one of the things that you should be aware also um, is that you do have to have a current status on how you reside in the US. Um, here are some categories that we're looking at. Basically what I tell potential applicants is that the School of Nursing is looking for the same doc documentation that you would supply uh, an employer in the US. Uh, and that's because nursing is a little bit different than other majors. Uh, what we're looking for um, at Hunter College is not just that you're going to be studying the major and taking lecture classes, you're in skills lab, but then you also start your clinical component uh, in your second semester of nursing. So in your uh, sophomore year spring semester, that's when you'll be in the hospital. And so hospitals really need all of that employment documentation, health insurance, uh, making sure that you have uh, CPR certification as well. So uh, that's the reasoning for uh, needing that. Um, additional information that I can provide for you, like I said, 50% of the admission is on your QM GPA, 50% is on the NLN exam. Uh, and then we can talk about really the course of study for the program. Uh, I went over kind of the prerequisites, but here is kind of what it would look like. We would like to see your, force, your first year courses uh, be these five. I know that a lot of you who have been admitted um, have taken some of these core courses at the high school level or have taken college now. And if that's the case, great. We will accept College Now courses, and we also will accept any AP credits that Hunter College um, has accepted. So if you're in that category that a lot of these courses have already been admitted, you will have an opportunity to meet with an academic advisor to plan your, your course of study. Uh, but here you can look at, the, or at, our, at our website in terms of what the School of Nursing will require that first year. And I would say it would take precedence to take the prerequisites, and then you can add the Hunter core requirements um, if you are at that level to be advanced into other courses. Um, anatomy and physiology, I get a lot of questions about the biology components. Uh, if you're a student that has taken a look at a lot of other nursing programs, you may see that anatomy and physiology are prerequisites. Here at Hunter, it's uh, part of the nursing major. So you do take anatomy and physiology with your nursing courses. And as you can see here, your second year uh, classes, you'll do the nursing fundamental coursework with genetics. And then as you can see, the, uh, the degree itself can be taken nursing courses um, in addition to the Hunter core requirements, which you'll take throughout as you continue with your program, okay? Right. And then just to talk about a little bit about the clinical experience, um, you will need to have clearance uh, to participate in the hospital. Uh, this will become more clear when you're accepted. There is an orientation once you admit it. So right before your sophomore year, uh, usually in June or July, we meet with you, let you know some of the responsibilities that you have as a nursing student in addition to how to order your uniforms uh, and any additional supplies that you need to have. Uh, in terms of clinical components, one of the things that you want to be aware of is that nursing is a seven day a week profession. Uh, so clinical can be any day of the week. Uh, and it just so happens that um, in nursing also, you know, 
health crisis can happen, natural disasters. Uh, what I find is that nursing students have to be uh, really flexible, uh, but also prepared that anything can change at any moment. Uh, clinical rotation sometimes won't be known until two weeks before the semester start, starts, sometimes one week. Uh, and sometimes we do have to change clinical rotations, but we still uh, make sure that you have all the skills that you need so that when you sit in for the uh, NCLEX exam, uh, you'll be well prepared uh, for it. Okay. Um, additional things that I would like to talk about. I think that that really would be great to talk um, in terms of the program. One of the things that I do want to take a moment to share uh, with all of you, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I will share another screen. Uh, it's just a video by a student that graduated from this program. Um, her name is Veronica Pasha. She works for uh, the health and hospital program. Let's see if I can share. If it loads. Okay, unfortunately, that is not loading. So, what I'll do is um, I will share it with the um, Welcome Center with the admissions office to send to all of you. Uh, but Veronica Pasha attended the uh, generic nursing program was one of our successful students and she was tapped by NBC to discuss the nursing program. Uh, so the video really goes over uh, what it is to be a nursing student, what to look forward to, uh, and how great of a profession um, it is. So with that, I'll just um, pause for a moment uh, and have one of our students really discuss the program. Do you want to, Rafaela? talk a little bit about what it is to be a nursing student. Hello, everyone. I wanted to say congratulations on your acceptance once again. I know it has been a hard year for all of us. So um, I'm a, my name is Rafaela and I'm a senior at Hunter's Generic Nursing Program. And um, I know you guys have a lot of questions, but I'll go over mainly uh, the prerequisites and what classes you will be taking once you're accepted into the nursing program. So uh, like Maria discussed, uh, you have certain prerequisites you need to take. And just to make sure that you guys all know, um, you have to score a B or above. You cannot have a C in any of your prerequisites. Um, so specifically in terms of the actual program for students that are accepted uh, starting this year, uh, you guys will have to take um, anatomy and physiology and like intro to nursing and genetics. And in that first semester, usually you will go to a nursing home and get to like you know, take blood pressure and do bed baths and things of that level. And you will also be in a lab where you will be able to practice um, doing blood pressure, vital, vital signs. You will have uh, skill checks as well. Um, and then you will go in to take more in-depth courses like adult health and illness. You'll learn about um, disorders that affect uh, certain age populations and what we do for these populations. You'll also get to learn about uh, medications used for conditions and um, including psych meds and um, heart medications. Um, there's also maternity, uh, pediatrics for children. And then you in your final year, you will be basically talking about uh, the elderly people. You'll have a chance to look at things like leadership and health policy. And uh, each semester you'll be doing uh, clinicals related to what classes you'll be taking. So uh, that's a little bit about my experience. 
Great, thanks, Raphael and Maria. Uh, we're going to jump into a couple of different questions here. Um, first, uh, kind of switching gears a little bit to um, for Raphael for your personal experience. Um, what would you say you like best about the nursing program at Hunter? What are some of your favorite attributes? Of the program? Uh, so I like the fact that Hunter's nursing program is very diverse. Uh, you get to see a lot of people from different parts of the world and even even different states. Uh, in America. I also like that the professors, they really uh, admire like teaching the courses and they, you know, they don't just read off PowerPoints. They actually put in the time and effort to make sure every student understands um, what happens because, you know, you need to know uh, the disorders that take place to be able to go to clinical and understand um, what happens. Also, uh, my, for, my favorite class was actually um, pharmacology <laughs> uh, because I, um, I liked you know, medications and understanding how the medications can help uh, people um, you know, to feel better and things like that. And in general, I just feel like Hunter's nursing program um, touches upon a lot of different subjects and each professor really enjoys teaching the courses that they do. Great, excellent. Um, Curious a little bit, and, and Maria, maybe this is for you and also Rafaela. Um, I know you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but typically, where do students wind up after Hunter um, and after Hunter Nursing? It's an extremely prestigious program, um, and our our job placement rate is pretty incredible, if you ask me, for this program. Um, so, would you mind commenting a little bit on where you've seen some of your more recent students um, wind up? Sure. Uh, most of our recent students, I want to say. Uh, really wind up at Mount Sinai. Um, as you know, Mount Sinai has um, expanded to a lot of different facilities, um, and there's a lot of expansion to the south uh, of Manhattan. So many of our students once graduated, um, and I would I would say graduation happens, and then students take about another six to, six to nine months to take the licensing exam, wait for that license, and then be hired. Uh, but most employers, once they have taken the emphasis exam, are willing to interview. And I would say a lot of our students um, interview with Mount Sinai. And also what I wanna say the New York uh, Health and Hospital System as well uh, tends to hire a lot of our students. Great, and would you say Maria that um, the vast majority of students that are graduating from the program are moving on to a profession in nursing and getting a job? Yes, absolutely. Especially now, I think that we will see in the next year or so uh, a lot of hire of new graduates. Uh, maybe a couple of years ago, there may be some hesitation in terms of hiring new grads, uh, but now particularly for the need, uh, you're gonna see that uh, really, really be, maybe even 100% of our graduates probably be employed uh, right after a year uh, of graduating. Great, excellent. Um, I'm curious, this is more for Rafaela. Um, what made you choose Hunter Nursing? Um, you probably chose Hunter first, uh, perhaps, and then thought about the nursing program, or maybe not. Can you talk a little bit about what your process was like? Uh, sure. So I actually transferred over for a, from a community college um, in Brooklyn. If anybody's from Brooklyn specifically, I transferred from Kingsborough. Uh, I looked into Hunter's nursing program because I heard um, I really heard a lot of good stuff about Hunter's nursing program. It's one of the nursing program that um, programs that offers a bachelor's degree uh, in the city. And um, I think it's also very like affordable compared to a lot of other nursing programs. Um, also by looking at the passing rate of the NCLEX, we, had a, we have a pretty high percentage and that's really important because you know that means that the nursing program prepares you really well so that when you finish the nursing program, you're able to sit and uh, pass your licensing exam. Uh, you know, if the rate is not too good, that means that possibly the professors um, are not able to, you know, get the information across to their students. So I would say that was a big decision and why I chose to go to this program. 
And I think that's a really important point, Raphael, to obviously there's no point in, in kind of going through a program if you ultimately don't get the appropriate license to, to practice. Um, and Maria, maybe you would have this figure, if I remember correctly, um, that figure is nearing 100%, isn't it, for net NCLEX pa uh, passing rate? Yeah, so our, our passing rate for our last uh, graduation class was 98%. Uh, so really, really great passing rates that we've had in the last couple of years. Uh, we've been in the 90s, I think, for the last uh, two years. Um, and then we were, I think, in 2018, uh, probably at the 89%. So our passing rate has actually increased uh, in the last couple of years. Great. I would say 98% is pretty good. So yeah. keep up the gap. <laughs> um, curious, this is a question a lot of our students have. So I'm going to ask this live to, to you. And problem, Maria, it's probably mostly for you. Um, what, how, what is the average amount of students that apply to the nursing program and how many get accepted? And, and, you know, and, and I could address this next portion of the question, which is sort of if you don't get accepted, there, there is other spots available at Hunter to maybe do some other things as well. Um, so it's a kind of a two part question. So if you could maybe address Absolutely. the first one first, that would be great. Absolutely. So we uh, receive about 300 application each year for 100 seats that we have for the generic program, um, 100 students. So one out of three students that apply are admitted to the program. Uh, for those students who are not admitted, there are a lot of different paths that students can take. Uh, we have a new major called human biology that a lot of our applicants tend to uh, do with a lot of the same prerequisite courses that you would for nursing. Um, we also have a lot of uh, our students consider nutrition or public health um, as well. So there are a lot of opportunities to think about other majors uh, within the School of Nursing. Uh, and for those students who perhaps, if you're not admitted to the generic program and decide to major in human biology or nutrition, uh, we do offer an accelerated second degree program where you can stay at Hunter College and then apply to a second degree and be and still be considered at Hunter for a nursing program. Great, so a lot of different options there. And I'll just quickly put in a plug also, if there we have students in this room, which I'm sure we do, I think they want nursing, maybe not entirely sure, or even a little nervous, what if I don't get into the program? There are other sessions just like this one. This happens to be our first one in the series, um, but there are other sessions as you probably saw on the programs that Maria are mentioning, such as public health, um, nutrition and food science that you could also attend so that you could maybe think about some other tracks as well as a possibility. Um, so a couple of other questions. Um, this one is an important one. We talked a lot about the high passing rate for the uh, for the exam, um, but does that necessarily lead to a job placement? And how does that work? I know the job assistance and job placement for Hunter Nursing is extremely good and powerful because of the network, and that's the major advantages of the program. Um, but if you could just, Maria, and both Rafaela, maybe from your perspective as well, talk a little bit about the network that you build and sort of how you make that next step. Sure. Uh, for, for potential nursing students, what I would say is make sure to visit the Career Development Center. Um, a lot of our health uh, centers around the city really communicate with the Career Development Center first. Uh, so if you're looking for a position or even as a nursing student, if you're looking for an externship, uh, let's say after your sophomore year or between your junior and senior year, you can uh, meet with a career development center. What we find also is that students tend to get hired where they do their clinical placements or where they do the externships. Uh, so that's another avenue to really uh, seek employment. What we tell our nursing students is to treat every um, clinical experience externship as a job interview because as nurses get to know you and physicians, uh, and they see how you are with patients, uh, they will probably offer you that employment uh, once you graduate. Great, excellent, sounds good. Rafael, any, any um, insight to that question from your perspective as you're one that's about to enter that, that path? <laughs> uh, so if I understood correctly, uh, the question also asked about um, if the licensing, like the passing rate for the license exam has to do with whether you're gonna be hired or not, right? Uh, sure. So um, just a really quick uh, overview of the NCLEX, just so you guys know, it's um, 
right now I believe it's about a um, hundred. The minimum I think is 75 in general and uh, the maximum is 265, but with the pandemic, it has become a lower number of questions for the actual NCLEX. So it's gonna be multiple choice and select all that apply. Uh, so there's also a pass or a fail. You don't actually get a score. So specifically with the um, NCLEX, it wouldn't necessarily matter for you uh, to get a job. It's just pass or fail. So once you get your license, you can get a job. But uh, because Hunter is well known to different hospitals, I do think that, you know, essentially when you finish Hunter's nursing program and you apply, uh, they do tend to ask, you know, where did you go to school for, you know, your nursing program or whatever. And uh, they do tend to like Hunter students and all the clinicals I've been to so far. Uh, they all say, uh, you know, we know when uh, a student is from like Hunter versus um, NYU or something like that. Uh, we tend to, I guess, uh, have more knowledge maybe or just be better at uh, taking care of patients. So uh, I actually currently am um, most likely going to work at Memorial Sloan. I have, um, you know, as, you know uh, as soon as I basically pass my NCLEX, I technically have a position there. So um, if anybody's interested in that hospital, I can also, if you have any questions and or stuff like that. Great, excellent. Um, this is an interesting question for uh, probably mostly for Maria, but um, once you're once you do get your license and you're able to practice nursing, what uh, are the job opportunities like in other countries? If you wanted to move abroad, have you had students go elsewhere, and is that possible? I would imagine there's some additional steps that you need to go through for that. Right, that's that's a really interesting question, and it really depends uh, the country and what their nursing board looks like. Uh, for example, um, if you're interested in going to England, for example, there's a different exam. Uh, so you have to make sure that you pass their licensing exam uh, before you venture out in working for them. Or I would say, you know, try to um, reach out before uh, you tend to go to the country to kind of see their, your prospects. So you know kind of the procedure of getting the license and then what the process is to then get employed. So kind of similar to the U.S., where a foreign nurse will come here and need to be licensed first. Great, excellent. Um, switching over to the student life side, are there any clubs for nursing uh, that students could, can attend, especially even before they're actually in the program, like student clubs at Hunter uh, that's surrounding uh, nursing or even healthcare? Um, if that's an option, if you're uh, familiar with that at all, Maria or Rafaela? I would recommend all students to really become, not just at Hunter, but just to become a member of the National Student Nursing Association. That would probably be the first step that I would tell students, uh, get to know the organization, attend their conferences. Uh, in terms of at Hunter, uh, we do have a very active student government. Um, I would say definitely try to connect with our student leaders uh, and become part of the government. Uh, I don't know if there's other programs that you want to recommend, Rafaela, to our potential students. Uh, to be honest, I haven't really heard of too many clubs, but I would say in general, any club really, I think would be good if you have free time, just so you like learn to interact with people, not be too shy, because with patients, you have to make sure that you're not too shy and you know you go in and you know how to interact. So I would say if you have uh, the time available, go into any club that you're really interested in and just maybe try to talk to new people. I think it would help in general. Great, yes, and, and another plug, come, come to one of our, or a few of our student life uh, talks coming up later this month um, and you can learn more about that for sure. Um, the next question's uh, around study abroad. Um, so assuming once this, obviously the pandemic is lifted come out on the other side of this, um, this, these programs will come back. We assure everyone that uh, one day. Can nursing students study abroad? Does it work with the schedule? Is it possible? Such a great question and thank you for asking. So what I tell our potential students is if you're thinking about studying abroad, the best time to go would be in a winter session or a summer session. And that's because uh, the nursing courses and the clinical are really at a set curriculum and a set schedule. 
so our fall and spring ab uh, study abroad would not work for our nursing program. You'll be out of sequence and delaying your graduation, but winter and summer really work. Uh, and sometimes our faculty even organize uh, international trips uh, to really learn how um, the health system in other countries work. Uh, we had a winter session for a couple of years in Dominican Republic. Of course, this is pre-COVID. Um, and we've had other groups uh, go to Guatemala. Uh, so there's a lot of different study abroad that can be health focused. Uh, some of them can be nursing focused. Some of them can be broadly uh, nursing focused and learning about how health uh, and the health system in other countries work. And we absolutely want to recommend students to have that exposure, uh, but really think about it for winter and summer and also, you know, also be willing to look over the guidelines to be able to go to other countries uh, before you as well. Great, fantastic. A um, couple of great questions coming through that we definitely want to answer. Um, live here. So just give me a moment to organize them for a quick second. Um, this is a good one. What would you say um, if you have any study tips um, for students since the, the, the coursework obviously seems a little challenging. Um, Rafael, if you have any study tips from your perspective and Maria, anything that you would also advise uh, from your perspective? Um, would you like me to go first? Sure, go first. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to ask, um, are the students interested more uh, for the prerequisites or for the actual nursing courses? Because there's a little bit of a difference. Sure, let's let's do both. We'll start with prereqs since we, we have mostly in the room, not exclusively, but mostly in the room students that are going to have to go through those prereqs first. Right. So uh, in regards to specifically classes that are science-based or math-based, I would say uh, go to lecture, uh, go through the PowerPoints, read your textbook, and then make sure that you find uh, questions um, that help you, you know, practice. Uh, for chemistry, for example, I know uh, Professor Grant is one of our professors for the general chemistry that the nursing, that the pre-nursing students would be taking. Uh, so she has PowerPoints, and then there's an eye clicker where you get to, you know, uh, engage in class. Uh, so make sure you do questions. You need to practice. Same goes for like statistics and stuff. And then um, let me see what other classes are they going to take um, for the prerequisites. I think that's all for the prerequisites. Um, yeah, I mean, writing and stuff. I think you guys know, you know, you read and then you write in regards to English. Uh, and then for the actual nursing program, so because your um, NCLEX, which is the licensing exam, is going to basically test you on real life scenarios, um, you need to know how to answer the questions uh, based on like, what would you do as a nurse if this happened at this moment? So whenever you read the material, you have to make sure that you go and practice what's called NCLEX questions and you can go into Quizlet and get them for free. And that will test you on your knowledge of how to act fast, who to see first, and things like that. So what I usually did is I would go through the textbook and look at the PowerPoints for any professor that provided them. And then I would search on Quizlet or nurselabs.com on the specific topic that I had. And then I would do questions and then I would know what, it, what do I know and what do I not know? And then try to like read the rationales. And I hope that helps. Great. Maria, anything to add to that? Yes, and I, I'm going to just share the website one more time because one thing that we haven't covered is oh, okay, never mind. Sorry, oh wait, sorry about that. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to go over was the NLN exam itself in terms of studying for it because it's 50% of the decision to be admitted into the program. Um, and we have a couple of recommendations right on our website for how to study for the NLN exam. So Rafaela mentioned Quizlet. I highly recommend that uh, you create an account uh, for uh, Quizlet and become familiar, but other areas where it can be helpful um, for the prerequisites and nursing courses are, of course, the Khan Academy crash course and Cliff Notes. And we have a link on our website to all of those uh, areas. Uh, and I also, it, it also recommends students to really see how you learn. 
Uh, if you're a person that really likes flashcards, Quizlet is kind of like a flashcard uh, interactive system. Uh, there are also a lot of just uh, physical flashcards that you can order. Like if you're studying anatomy and physiology, uh, that would be great. There's also coloring books uh, of anatomy uh, and different interactive interactive uh, books that you can use in addition to the textbooks uh, and lectures is really testing yourself on how well you study. You know, are you more of a verbal, visual learner, uh, kind of really connecting to what your strengths are and how you learn, and then applying uh, different materials that will help you uh, with those areas. Great. Excellent. A um, couple of quick hit questions that are coming through um, that are logistics. Um, and I want to make sure that they get answered quickly. A few of you are asking about Macaulay and the Nursing Honors Program, so I'll quickly address that myself here. Um, if you've applied to both, you do not get admitted to both. Um, so you will get admitted to one or the other. Um, you'll actually be reviewed for the Macaulay Honors College first and then the Nursing Program uh, Scholars Program after that. Um, if you wish um, to have that order reversed or you wish to talk a little bit more about that, you're more than welcome to contact the admissions office. Um, and we can kind of talk you through those two different options um, and kind of tell you a little bit more in detail, but that is how the review process works um, for the two of them. Um, so you won't be admitted into both. As far as decisions are concerned, a lot of you have asked about this. Macaulay Honors decisions will be released um, uh, March 22nd and the Nursing Scholars Program decisions will be released very shortly thereafter, probably within the next day or two after that point. Um, so just so you're aware of that. A uh, couple of other really good questions that are coming up here. Um, let's see, Maria, this is a quick one. What grades do, do students need to maintain when they're in the nursing program? You have to maintain a C grade in all of your nursing courses when you're in the program. Great, excellent. And I know this was answered, um, but it's it can be a little confusing if you're new to the college program. When, when do they apply for nursing? When do you apply for the nursing school? How does that work? So they get, you get admitted to Hunter as a freshman, you start your, your foundation classes and, and then what? Yes, so it's always a great um, question to go over. So basically as a freshman, if you are on target to take all the prerequisite courses that we discussed in the first half of the presentation, uh, then you are recommended to file that nursing cast application uh, and that will open November 30th. So really in your first semester of your freshman year, that November you wanna file your application and submit it no later than February 1st. The NLN exam itself, because it goes together, uh, that exam uh, we actually administer throughout the year and we give you until the end of uh, February to take the test. Uh, as I said, this year the exam was administered uh, online due to the pandemic. If anything should change for this new uh, class, which would be uh, all who are with us today, we will keep you informed through our website. Uh, and also you can keep in contact uh, with the nursing program um, as well. Attend our info sessions and we'll make sure to let you know what will happen for next year. Perfect, excellent, thanks Maria. Um, this is sort of a, a related question, but it's worth um, sort of revisiting here. Of course. Um, so. Do you make a decision freshman year to become uh, to be preparing for the nursing program? Um, I know it's a little confusing because you're not declaring your major, but you're preparing for the nursing program. So can you just make a distinction between those two so students can can understand that? Sure. So for nursing, you do not declare a major. You really apply. We are an apply to the program program. Once you are admitted, usually we let students know by the end of their freshman year, uh, in late May, early June, if you've been admitted to the nursing program. Uh, once you are admitted and you accept admission, uh, then the School of Nursing goes uh, forward, reviews that you meet all the qualifications, and we declare your nursing major in that July uh, for the upcoming fall. So you'll be on a different track than, let's say, a biology um, or anthropology major. Excellent. Um, and a couple of more quick ones. We're, we're about wrapping up in the next few minutes, um, but these are some good questions. Um, and, and this is certainly a good one. Do you register to take the PACS exam this year if you're an incoming freshman, or do I wait until I graduate high school and become a Hunter student first? Such a great question, and I highly recommend 
all students to take the exam. If you uh, have the funds now and you want to test yourself for the NLN, you can go right ahead and take the exam uh, on Eximity. Uh, and the reason for that is that it's great for you to know uh, what are your strengths. Is it, you know, do I have to do more on my verbal ability, uh, verbal ability, biology or science or math. Uh, each score is good for two years. Uh, and we recommend students to take the exam once every six months uh, if they're not happy. So if you're a high school senior now, uh, I would recommend take it by July of this year. If you're happy with your composite score, usually a 150 or higher is a really good score uh, to get admitted. Uh, then you don't have to worry about the tests and you just focus on getting good grades and applying to the program. Uh, if you're unhappy with your score, then we say retake it in February uh, to see if you can have a little bump up into your composite score and be a more competitive applicant. Perfect, excellent. Um, and we're gonna conclude just with one quick thing. If there's, um, and we're gonna include both you, Maria and Rafaela, if there's one thing you'd like to say to our admitted students here um, in preparation to potentially choosing um, Hunter and nursing at Hunter, um, what is it that you'd like to convey to them um, about the Hunter community? Um, if you want to, Maria, maybe start with that. Sure. You know, I was happy to hear Rafaela say that in every hospital, uh, our nursing students are really well known. So as you're considering making a decision on which nursing program, which college to attend, uh, just know that Hunter College is a flagship school. It was one of uh, one out of the first two nursing programs established in the US. Uh, so you are becoming a part of a tradition, a long legacy of nursing. Uh, and I would say, as you're making your decision, just know that you have to hit the ground running, uh, continuing to get the, those good grades and get a good score to be admitted. Uh, and we would love to have you as a nursing student. Fantastic. Thank you, Maria. Um, that is really good summation. Uh, Rafael, did anything to add to that or? Uh, sure. Um, so I would say, uh, if you decide to come to Hunter, you should. It's great. I love this college. Um, I would say make sure you take the prereqs seriously, uh, you know, study, work hard, and you'll, you'll be great future nurses. We're going to be happy to have you, and I hope you come to Hunter. Yeah. Well, thank you very both for your insightful presentation, and also a huge thank you to all of our admitted students that joined us today. You guys were a really uh, engaged group. I know we don't, we're not seeing you on camera, but you asked amazing questions, and, and a lot of them, which is really important, and we hope you got a lot out of this session, so we really thank you for joining us today. Um, so just to give you a little bit of an insight, we have, like I mentioned earlier, some more upcoming Hawk Talks on topics such as um, diversity, equity, and inclusion on campus, student life, all the other health topics that we talked about. Um, so we spread them out over the months of March and April so that you could kind of maybe register for a couple that you're interested in. So revisit our admitted student page. We're going to put it up in the chat in a moment. Um, and feel free to register for as many as you would like. Do attend one of our general sessions if you haven't already, because that will give you a virtual tour of campus as well. Um, so we continue, uh, we definitely encourage you to continue learning about us in a variety um, in a variety of ways. And in our general session, also you get a chance to meet our, our, a couple of our deans, um, as well as hearing from a, a student panel. So you hear from more students. So we definitely encourage you to keep engaging with us uh, in this manner. Um, if you decided Hunter is the place for you, make sure that you log into your CUNY FIRST account and submit your uh, commitment to Hunter and also your deposit by May 1st, and that will reserve your spot in the fall 2021 class. Um, so we very much look forward to seeing you again soon, and we hope you have a great afternoon, and we hope to see you on campus in some way, shape, or form in the fall. Have a great day, everyone.